Today we're gonna to talk about how to properly assess your client. All right, so we got a lot of people. Like I said, video is for new trainers, um, former athletes. Talk a lot to my former athletes and trainers who are just starting off. But of course, this can be used by experienced trainers who may need help in these areas that I talk about. So today's video is gonna be about how to properly assess your client. So that means when you're talking to somebody new when you're trying to gain information, things you need to kind of look for. Um, got my notes right here. Let me pull up the first one. So first thing you need to do, um, this is something that I have to always check myself on doing because I'm quick to jump to tip two and three. Number one is make sure that you're getting the proper vitals and protocol information from your clients before you start, um, especially dealing with gym pop they're not always super hyper aware of how something small could affect, you know, something big or how that could affect the routine or regimen that you want to create for them. So um, just personal story. I had a guy who we went through the whole assessment and it was more so of a casual conversation and testing his physical abilities. And he failed to mention that he was taking beta blockers, you know, um, I had another guy um, who failed to mention that he had high blood pressure. It just never came up in conversation. And since I failed to go through proper protocol and checklists, it was something that I had to really, you know, take note of and alter on the fly to make sure I wasn't doing any, you know, isometric holes or, you know, things like that or wall sits or nothing that would spike his blood pressure and have him pass out on me. Um, you know, those things kind of come up once it affects something that we're actually doing and then they kind of mention it, but always make sure you go through um, a, pop, a proper um, health and vital and um, family history type questionnaire with your clients or potential clients. Um, you'll find out things about them that you need to know and things that you need to be aware of. So they could have injuries in the past and you know, you're not dealing with athletes who want to tell you like, say bro, ankle ain't feeling all that good, hamstring kind of bothering me, my shoulders ain't right. You know, you got people who they broke their ankle 10 years ago and since their ankle's not bothering them today and they wear heels every day, they don't think to tell you that they broke their ankle 10 years ago. And then y'all get to doing something and they start spazzing out or tripping and you're like, what's going on? They're like, well, I broke my ankle 10 years ago. It's like, what the fuck? You ain't think that was important for me to know? God damn. Um, so make sure you as a trainer go through the proper checklist and protocol and injury history and family history. Make sure they're not taking medications, make sure they're not, you know, have any aches and pains or injuries or things like that. And let them know to be 100% honest and thorough because everything is important. All right. Um, number two, get a personal backstory. So listen for comprehension when you do this. I know a lot of people in general, just in general, fundamental conversation about anything, a lot of times as human beings, we listen for trigger words or we listen to respond. We really don't listen to understand on a deeper level. Um, so you need to listen for comprehension on both ends, a positive and negative um, perspective. So for example, if somebody tells you that they've never exercised before, or they tell you that they've always steered away from exercising, you need to listen a little bit deeper and figure out you know, what their life has been like. So don't automatically hear, oh, they don't exercise, so they're lacking motivation or they're lazy or they have some type of self-esteem issues or something like that. You know, it could be that they had kids early in life or they had a job where they traveled a lot or they've never just really been exposed to exercise. Maybe they're from a different country or due to their culture or background or something like that. And you know, there, there are some intangible or embedded things that don't necessarily 
match up with your own personal opinion about the trigger words that you hear from people. So make sure you're listening to understand, all right? And then on the other side of it, you know, don't hear that your client used to be a collegiate athlete back when he was in college. So you hear the trigger word athlete and go, bitch, we about to go do box jump, boom, 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 bear cross, you know what I'm saying? And then he's like, uh, I ain't done that shit in 20 years, homie. You know, like homeboy may be in his 50s and all you heard was athlete. So now you want to immediately bust his ass and don't do that shit either. That goes back to making sure you going through proper you proper checklist and protocol for step one because you hear them trigger words and you you know start to create your own personal opinion about what this person can do and you're not really listening and digesting the whole story so make sure you do that get a personal backstory in this backstory this should be more of your or in acquiring this backstory this should be more of your natural conversation getting to know the person figuring out where they're from figuring out what their motivators are, figuring out um, why they want to train or work out, you know, at a different level or higher level in the first place. So that way you can not only keep them motivated and empowered through exercise, but also their mental and spiritual health too, which will help them stick with you long-term, uh, not only financially, but you'll have their mental capacity on your side as well. Um, and then the last thing is once you've gathered this information, um, you can make reasonable assumptions from this, all right? And you can start to build your progressive plan with this person and then of course communicate that plan with your client. So reasonable assumptions is something I use a lot with my training staff now. And it just means that you take a piece of, a piece of information and then based off what you know as the truth, you can make a reasonable, good or bad, personal, opinionated assumption about that, all right? So let's say somebody tells you, hey, I ran track in college. That is the truth. Cool, that's your data. Now, the reasonable assumption with that would be that they know how to run or that they have proper running mechanics or that they're at least decent or they may be fast or they may have a certain you know, amount of fast twitch fibers. That is a reasonable assumption based off the truth that you know about them, you know, given that data point. Um, you know, so just make sure that you're collecting that data, you're having that conversation. And then from there, you can start to make those reasonable assumptions, not based off trigger words, based off what you actually know and have actually internalized and thought about on a deeper level that will help you really progress and make their plan the best plan for that particular person. And then you'll increase your business that way, you'll get better referrals that way, and you'll be more comfortable um, in your craft and mastering your craft, not only with each client, but for yourself as well, all right? Hope this video helps some trainers out there. Y'all like, comment, subscribe. I'll see y'all later, peace.